first diplomatic mission to Africa. Michael reschedules examination timetable of a Ondo state gubernatorial election. On Florentine, millions of Americans head to pool amid razor tight presidential election. And in sports, Ministerial Committee indict Athletics Federation of Nigeria for meeting favor Philly from 2024 Olympic 100 meters event. And now the details I am Mike James. <laughs> The governor, Baba Jirisol, has received the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary, David Lamy, in a courtesy call at the State House in Marina. Hours after the British envoy arrived in Nigeria in his first trip to Africa to discuss UK's new approach to the continent. Lamy, who was accompanied by the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery and his deputy John Baxter said Lagos became his first port of call in his Africa tour given the centuries-old relationships between the two countries. The foreign secretary said the sociocultural and economic relationship between the United Kingdom and Nigeria was second to none, pointing out that Lagos had a huge number of families with relatives in London and other parts of the UK with the mutual dealings further strengthened in business remittances and finance cooperation. Lamy, who said that his visit was to further enhance the bilateral ties between the two countries, creating mutual understanding that would unlock more opportunities for both sides in thriving trade relations, said the UK is looking forward to a new partnership with Lagos, an expansion of clean energy consumption, which would help the city to bolster its adaptation to climate change. Deep sea port and other things. We want to see more over the coming months uh, and years. And of course, in this age of climate, as we also see growth in energy, particularly clean energy, there is possibilities between companies that want to invest here um, in Lagos um, as well. I'm very pleased that my dear friend Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, is working so closely with Lagos and we see Transport for London also uh, working in partnership with you um, over this next horizon uh, and this next period particularly. On his part, Governor Solo told the visiting British envoy that the new UK trade approach aligned with the state's growth plan, noting that Lagos possessed a huge population of creative and dynamic young people yearning for new opportunities across sectors. The governor said the state government had sustained an investment in knowledge-based training opportunities for young people to develop their talent and make their skills lucrative in modern economic order. We need to probably just be able to take that forward and be able to build, you know, both on that diaspora side, but more importantly, you know, on the government government side and create an opportunity for businesses to grow and thrive. What we have as a clear advantage in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, is the sheer number of the young, you know, dynamic population that that we see and the yearning, you know, for 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 new opportunities globally. Governor Solu shared business opportunities waiting to be harnessed in waste management, stressing that Lagos grapples with over 10,000 metric tons of waste daily, which could serve as raw materials for companies converting waste to clean energy. The Lagos State Environmental and Specific Offences Enforcement Unit Task Force has confiscated 70 vehicles for flagrant violation of the Lagos State Traffic Law as amended. Chairman of the Lagos State Task Force, Adetayo Akirili, said these vehicles were impounded in coordinated operations carried out at target locations where reckless traffic violations by commercial transporters caused avoidable traffic congestion and general public nuisance. Akirili, who warned motorists in a habit of traffic recklessness, maintained that the agency under his stewardship will not spare violators of environmental and traffic laws of the state. He added that the exercise and enforcement operation was carried out at the Ukuta Road Junction in Bariga, Obakran Road and Kodeshaw under the bridge, Ikeja and Ladipo by Five Star along Oshudia Papa Expressway. Ahead of the upcoming festive season, the federal government through the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, has launched a major road repair initiative to improve traffic flow across federal highways nationwide. 
during the flag off of Operation Connect Your Destination Phase 2 in Kano State. Fairma Managing Director Chukwemeka Agbasi outlined the project's targets. According to Agbasi, by the end of the exercise, Fairma aims to parch 18,085 square meters of road surface. He noted that the agency has strategically mapped out traffic prone areas, prioritizing them for maintenance to ensure the maximum positive impact on road users. Also, head of Fairma's direct labor department, Sonny Abdul Kadir, noted that the roadworks are scheduled for completion by mid-December to avoid interruptions during the Yuletide period. The federal government, through the Ministry of Works, has directed the contract to handle in Section 1 of the rehabilitation of the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kanudwal Carriageway to evacuate the project site. This followed a 14-day final termination notice issued to the company on Monday dismissing any possibility of further negotiations. A statement by the Director of Press and Public Relations in the Ministry, Mohamed Hamed, said the termination was based on non-compliance with the reviewed cost, scope of terms, stoppage of work and refusal to remobilize to the site as directed by the Ministry. Hamid noted that negotiations had been ongoing for several months without any significant progress, stressing that the decision was reaching was reached during a management meeting of the ministry at its headquarters. The Petroleum Products Retail Outlet Owners Association of Nigeria has insisted that the price of premium motor spirit, also known as petrol, it, atten it intends to import will be cheaper than the current rate sold in the country. In a statement by its National Public Relations Officer, Joseph Obele, the group said competition must be allowed in a deregulated environment. Obele noted that the group had incorporated a business unit that would enable it to bring in petrol before December. It disputed the allegation by Dangote Refinery that the marketers intend to import substandard products at a cheaper rate, saying the claims are not surprising. Obele stated that intensive or aggressive competition in any market brings the best value for money exchange for a commodity, and consumers get the best value for pricing when competition is at its peak. And over to the rest of the stories. The National Examination Council, NECO, has adjusted its timetable for the Senior School Certificate Examination external due to the forthcoming Ondo State Gubernatorial Election. NECO made this known in a news flash on its website, urging candidates to check the revised timetable for changes. It also note, noted that the registration deadline remained as follows. Standard registration closes on the 6th of November, late registration from the 7th of November, while walk-in registration will be available from 13th of November, both of which will attract additional fees. NECO urged candidates to act promptly and stay informed to avoid any last-minute inconveniences. Today is World Tsunami Awareness Day. In December 2015, the United Nations General Assembly designated 5th of November as World Tsunami Awareness Day, calling on countries, international bodies and civil societies to raise tsunami awareness and share innovative approaches to risk reduction. The day was the brainchild of Japan, which, due to its repeated bitter experience, has over the years built up major expertise in areas such as tsunami early warning, public action and building back better after a disaster to reduce future impacts. Tsunamis are rare events but can be extremely deadly and in the past 100 years, 58 of them have claimed more than 260,000 lives or an average of 4,600 per disaster, surpassing any other natural hazard. This year's theme, Fighting Inequality for a Resilient Future, focuses on the effect of disasters and the importance of supporting vulnerable communities. And in some foreign news, it is election day in the United States with Donald Trump and Kamala Harris vying to become the next president. The polls will open at 5 a.m. local time. Harris has advocated for abortion rights and pledged to lower food and housing costs for working families, while Trump has vowed to seal the border and proposed tax cuts worth trillions of dollars. Also, Trump ended his campaign with a speech in Michigan, 
while Harris wrapped up in another swing state, Pennsylvania. And more than 82 million people have already voted. In sports news, a ministerial committee established by the federal government has uncovered serious administrative failings within the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, AFN, including the inactions of officials that led to favor Philly's non-registration for the women's 100 meters at the Paris 2024 Olympics. In a report, chairman of the committee, Muni Alao, presented the findings and recommenda recommendations results from their investigations. The committee said conflicting evidence showed that the omission of a Philly's name is traceable to the AFN, the Nigeria Olympic Committee, NOC, the World Athletics, WA, and the International Olympic Committee, IOC. It also recommended that the Secretary General of the AFN, Rita Mosindi, and the Technical Director, Samuel Onikeku, be sanctioned due to their roles in favor of Philly's omission from the 100 meters event. The committee recommended that AFN compensate Ophelia with 8 million naira for the disappointment and depression she experienced due to her omission from the event. And that was our news at 10. But just before we go, always carry out proper and adequate checks on your vehicles before setting out. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs. It's live on YouTube, Traffic Radio 961. And you can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. And did you know that the Songwulu administration inaugurated 180 bed hostel, block of classrooms, others at Model College, Ibukuta? You can get more details on the legacy government website. And to end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. <music> the legacy state governor, Baba Jidis Olu, has received the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary, David Lammy, in a courtesy call at the State House in Marina. Hours after the British envoy arrived in Nigeria in his first trip to Africa to discuss UK's new approach to the continent. The National Examination Council NECO has adjusted its timetable for the senior school certificate examination external due to the forthcoming Undo State gubernatorial election. And we also told you that it is election day in the United States with Donald Trump and Kamala Harris vying to become the next president. In sports, a ministerial committee established by the federal government has uncovered serious administrative failings within the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, AFN, including the inactions of officials that led to favor Ophelia's non-registration for the women's 100 meters at the Paris 2024 Olympics. And for contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That ends the news broadcast. It was compiled by Adiwalulu Boroku. Thank you for listening, Lagos. My name is Mike.